Hey guys, welcome to another new show. This is not case of things I've wanted to do for a while. We're finally getting back, but like it's summertime, so I have free time, which means I can do all the shit I wanted to do for a while now. Yay! So uh, this one is a Grant and Me show. Uh, so basically, the show uh, called Comic Cartoons. Yes, as you can see, my swarm of dogs are in my living room, ah. and my dog said this play. was the shy one. <laughs> well, she warmed up to you. <laughs> This is like the, this is like a safe haven couch. For some reason, she feels she can come to me. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> okay. Damn it! Why do I have to be the ranger? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this is a, this is for some sort of comic cartoons. <laughs> Fluffy fuckers ruined my intro. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is comic cartoons. We're looking like it. Uh, I almost wanted to call this forgotten comic cartoons. But I was like, yeah, well, these are still recent. So I'm just gonna look at that slide. But, uh, we decided to start off with my all-time favorite shows, and my favorite, easily the best Spider-Man cartoon, I think, that's, Ooh, yeah. that's ever been made. I mean, I'm including that with the crappy Ultimate Spider-Man one right now, because fuck that show. <laughs> uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, which was made by, uh, guys, okay, you know what, you guys are done. <laughs> no, 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 you guys are done. There you go. Okay. So, it was made by Greg Wiseman before Young Justice. I think this came back, what, 2008, I think it was? Probably. Something like that. Either way, uh... This is such a good damn show. <laughs> I mean, uh, so we're gonna take the first episode. We're gonna do a lot of the Daredevil, Daredevil vlog. We're just gonna go episode by episode. So we're gonna start with the first episode here, which is called uh, "Survival of the Fittest." So uh, you've never seen this show at all, period. Nope. Okay, this is my one. I've you seen on. just some clips every here and there. Okay, so what was your thought on the first episode? It's good. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, it's, it's like I know it's not quite reaching those levels of no pun intended, the spectacularness that you yeah. Know, yeah, although that's what you said, like, it takes a while for it to, like, really get going, though. Mm -hmm. Especially season two, gets, like, the, they really let loose the animation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, this isn't their strongest episode. This is the introductory episode where you're, like, setting up all the characters and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fun little setups in here, though. Like, there's a lot of nice little nods to the comic books and stuff like that, because, uh, one thing I loved about the series, and uh, I don't know if you know this or not, Maxwell, for the love of God! <laughs> Maxwell, get over here. <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, like, uh, for example, like, there's a ton of, like, tiny little bit characters. Like, every character on this show is from the comic books, big and small. Yeah, like, I spotted quite a few of them, much to my surprise. Uh, like, which ones did you find? Well, um, obviously, you know, some of the more notable ones, like Connors and... Yeah, like, you got Kirk Connors and it starts, like... Yeah. It does kind of what uh, Batman the Animated Series did uh, for a little bit, which is where they introduce some of the characters before they actually become supervillains. Yeah. Like how Harvey Dent was uh, in the first few episodes of Batman before he became Two-Face. Yeah. And this was, uh, I think this takes it to a much bigger extreme, though, because the fucking Sin Eater is in the first episode of this movie. <laughs> the first episode of this. Sin Eater? He's a, he's a very obscure comic book villain. Is that who Keith David was voicing? No, uh, he's actually, I don't think he even has a line in this one. He's just there. He's, talk, he's one of the police officers talking... Uh, in front of the police station. Oh. That's like, and the, again, the one next to him is uh, Jean DeWolf, who eventually becomes captain. Oh, okay. Now, they don't say that yet. It's They make it clear later on in the series, but they make their introduction here. Yeah. So shit like that. I don't know who the doctor is, like Dr. Boswell. I don't remember the comic books. I'm sure he's there, probably. Uh, but either way, like the storyline of this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's the middle, like, the middle of the start of the new semester, and he's just learning how to become Spider-Man and stuff like that. He spent, spent all summer being Spider-Man, and he's having a lot of fun with it, and then realizing, you know, shit gets real when school starts again, because yeah. that's usually how life works. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we have Adrian Toomes, who's played by Robert England, which, as many know, is Freddy Krueger. Woo! Who gets in an argument with uh, Otto Octavius. Who that, that's who that was. Oh, okay. He... I didn't realize... I didn't hear the name. I didn't realize that was Doc Ock. That's Doc Ock. Uh, I thought... I somehow thought that was the guy in the first Spider-Man movie got killed by Norman Osborn. Mm -hmm. oh, you, talk, you want to talk about a bit character in the comic books. That character they used for that is such a ridiculously bit character. He was in one issue. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's all they ever used him for. Uh, anyway, that's a whole other issue. As you can tell, no I'm intended. a... Yeah, no pun intended. It's, you know, I'm a huge diehard Spider-Man fan. I have since I was a kid. I don't keep up with it as much now as I used to, unfortunately. But that's because they did a lot of things that pissed me off, so I kind of swore it off. But... Yeah. Um, so watching this, I've had a lot of fun catching the nuts, and of course you have, uh, so he gets mad because uh, Norman Osborn, who plays, he was such a great douchebag in this show. Yeah. Um, uh, 
stole his flight tech technology or claim or claims he did. So he tries to get revenge by becoming the vulture, and he starts chasing after Norman Osborn. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the big man, who is uh, kind of a smaller player in the comic books, he plays a bigger role here. He's basically like this version of the Kingpin. Uh, although there's a big twist about whose real identity. I'm not gonna say it now, but yeah. So the funny thing is, like, I was wondering. Is that Kingpin I'm hearing over the speaker or something? No, they couldn't use him. Yeah. So it, they call him the big man here, who ha who's second to command is Hammerhead, which is a really nice touch. <laughs> uh, do you know who Hammerhead is? Um, I think not too well. Like, I know I've seen him before, but I think it was in, like, one of the spinoff things. Yeah, he's, like, he's, again, kind of one of the major players. There's a nice little, like, mafia vibe in this. <laughs> anyway, they call him the Enforcers, which is another kind of more obscure Spider-Man villain. And they hunt him down too, and it leads to his one free uh, free for all brawl at the end of the, end of the episode. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the plot in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what were your thoughts? Since you like, this is your first exper exposure to this show. Uh, it was it was fun. Like, I mean, yeah, maybe not the best thing I've seen yet, but you know, it's mm -hmm. like for the most part, well written, good structure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> animation is definitely unique in some mm -hmm. regards. Like, it's the style is. I can understand how some people might have been, like, off-put by it before, but, like, it's, you know, it's a, they use it well. Yeah, I was off-put, but when I first saw the designs, I was like, is this really what we're going for? This looks really weird. But when you see it in action, it works really well. Yeah. Like, the action is really smooth and really flows well. It looks great in Blu-ray. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I think it's kind of one of the more simplistic animation is because the action sequences, especially in Season 2, are so fucking good. Yeah. Like I like I would personally argue that at least some of the ones later on are like some of the best action scenes in all of television, debatably, debatably. I'll acknowledge that. Yeah. But, but like even like the second episode alone, there's so many small little things they throw in there. Yeah. Like uh, with the second villain they introduce, which we'll get to. Uh, even then, there's some pretty cool stuff here, like with Fancy Dan and all the flipping and the twirling and all that shit. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the voice cast? Uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, like, they're perfect. Admittedly, I'm kind of not used to Harry uh, and Gwen being, like, nerdier than what I remember. Because, mm -hmm. like, I read some of the older comics, not a lot, mm -hmm. but I remember them not being quite so geeky. Yeah, to be fair, though, Gwen's character in the comic books was uh, much more just, I'm the perfect blonde one kind yeah. of character, so I get why they changed that. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, uh, another thing the show does a lot, and I, it's one reason that I really like it, is it takes stuff from the comic books, but it's not afraid to do its own thing. Yeah. Like, uh, and we'll talk about this more when we get episode two, is the fact that, yeah, they do, they, they kind of pick and choose, but they make it work to the best extent. Yeah. And they do a lot of, they do a lot of foreshadowing, they do a lot of setting up. Like, a lot of this first episode is just kind of setting up a lot of stuff that will come later Yeah, on like seeing, show. you know, Sandman right away. Like, Sandman, Rhino was there, too. Oh, that's who the other guy was? Yeah, that was Rhino. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he they're both there, too. And Shade! Shade, get off the couch. It's just, I remember Sandman, though, because, you know, he had that, you know... Yeah, he's got the classic striped shirt yeah. on. Uh, it's also played by uh, Bender, also. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And uh, Rhino is played by Lex Luthor. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. He also plays... He actually plays a few voices in the show. Cool. Uh... But yeah, like, this is a pretty straightforward episode. It's, it's setting everything up. You got all the characters. I mean, there's still, like, the high school cliches. So that's kind of... You kind of have to give and take that with Spider-Man. <laughs> so you have, like, Flash Thompson, who's just kind of the kind of goofy bully. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's kind of laughing at looking back at it now, because it's been a long time since I've watched it. It's just how goofy they made him, and kind of over-the-top silly. They kind yeah. of made him, so you don't necessarily hate him. Purely hate him. But yeah. it's, so it's, it's still kind of funny to see that work. They also have Khan in here, which is a nice touch. Who? Khan, he was the ball, he was the big bald guy. That's his nickname. Oh, okay. Nah, nah. <laughs> he was actually he actually wasn't in the original comic he wasn't in the original comic books. He was introduced in the ultimate comic books. Oh, okay. That's why, like, uh, again, they're kind of picking and choosing what to take from what series. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh Brock Oh wait, no. Was Brock introduced in the first episode again? Yeah, Brock was in the first episode. He also was not quite what I expected. Yeah, they kind of, they're kind of blending, again, they're kind of blending the original and, and, and ultimate version. Yeah. Because in the ultimate version, they were like childhood friends that rediscovered each other years later. Okay. Uh, and of course, in the Rose Comics, they're rival reporters. That's not the direction they take it with this one. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, I'll let you some stuff, because I've been doing most of the talking so yeah. far. <laughs> um, just, yeah, I mean, you pretty much already said it, you know, very straightforward show, but, you know, animation, while different, they use well. Mm -hmm. Um... 
as we said, great voice guy, especially Josh Keaton. Oh, yeah. Like, he's just spot on as Spider-Man. Fuck you, Marvel. <laughs> Drake Bell has got nothing on this fucking guy. I was like, I'm still mad about that. I'm still angry. <laughs> like, All because he was in the superhero movie. <sighs> well, he basically played the Spider-Man parody and then became Spider-Man himself. Oh, that just makes it worse. I didn't know that. Thanks, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Thanks, asshole. <laughs> uh, but I was like, this is the thing. Guys, I want to be clear on this. This is my Firefly. You know, like, all people got really mad after Firefly was canceled after one season? This is that for me. I'm still mad about this, and this got canceled, like, four or five years ago. <laughs> I'm still mad. At least it unlike Firefly, it had two seasons. Uh, <laughs> true. It, it still got canceled for stupid bullshit reason that should not oh, have yeah. been canceled for. Ugh. So it happened quite a bit with these animated comic book shows. <laughs> Fucking Jeff Loeb. And it's like, oh no, this smart, intelligent uh, superhero show is good for kids and adults? Oh, we don't want that. Let's replace it with the bottom of the fucking barrel, lowest common denominator bullshit. <laughs> I'm bitter. I'm, I'm still bitter. <laughs> uh, next episode? Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, next episode. I'm Maxwell.